Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I will be discussing the Indian epic action film RRR. Spoiler ahead. Watch out and take care. The film depicts the era of direct British control over the Indian subcontinent. It opens with Scott Buxton, a harsh British administrator, returning from a hunting expedition in the forest. Meanwhile, his wife Catherine receives a hand painting from Molly, a skilled young girl belonging to the Gon tribe. Scott is taken aback by Molly's talent, but he holds a dismissive view of people with brown skin and doesn't acknowledge their worth. Catherine expresses her desire to bring Molly with them, leading Scott to instruct his assistant to compensate the girl's mother. Loki, the mother, misunderstands the purpose of the payment, assuming it is for Molly's artwork. Unaware of the true intention, she is unaware that her daughter will be taken away from her. Chaos ensues as Loki desperately tries to prevent the car from leaving, hugging one of the wheels while pleading for her daughter's release. A sergeant, about to shoot her, is halted by Scott, who considers it a waste of a bullet. Instead, the sergeant brutally strikes Loki with a wooden object, causing her immediate death. The rest of the tribe can only watch in shock and disbelief. As Molly sits inside the car, she bears witness to the brutal scene. Simultaneously, a prison facility finds itself on the brink of intrusion, as enraged Indians demand the release of their leader, Lala Lashpat Rai. The terrified jail guards, clearly outnumbered, desperately call for backup, only to learn that reinforcements won't arrive for hours. Aluri Sitarama Raju is assigned the near-impossible task of apprehending a protester amidst the sea of angry demonstrators outside. Acting without hesitation, he leaps into the crowd, engaging in physical confrontation to reach his target. Despite facing multiple instances of being overwhelmed, he ultimately succeeds in capturing the individual and makes his way back inside. Unable to meet Governor Scott, Venkata Vadani, a special advisor to the Nizam, informs his assistant Edward about the purpose of his visit. Governor Scott and his team have brought Molly with them, causing the tribe and the police department to demand her return. Venkat also warns Edward about a guardian within the tribe who is willing to risk everything to save the young girl. In response, Edward gathers soldiers and orders them to capture the tribal leader, even without knowledge of their identity. Catherine proposes a challenge, offering a promotion to the rank of special officer to whoever can accomplish the seemingly impossible task. Raju steps forward to accept the challenge. In a forest near Delhi, Kamaram Beam volunteers as bait to trap a wolf. However, during the chase, a tiger notices him and begins pursuing him as well. In the end, with the help of his men, he successfully captures the tiger. Beam and his team have been searching for Molly for the past six months but have had no luck so far. Back in the city, Beam disguises himself as a Muslim mechanic. Despite being assaulted by a British soldier, Beam chooses not to retaliate to protect his true identity and the safety of his host family. Observing the governor's mansion, Beam and his men devise a plan. They send Jangu, one of their companions, to pose as a worker, but he is immediately attacked when he lacks proper identification. Jenny intervenes, threatening the soldier for his cruel treatment. Beam sees an opportunity to befriend Jenny as a means to gain entry into the mansion. Raju confides in his uncle about his plan to align with the tribal leader, aiming to make him believe they share a common cause. This strategy is intended to lower the leader's guard. To begin their mission, Raju and his uncle attend pro-independence gatherings, hoping to uncover clues that will lead them to Beam. The tribal leader proposes the idea of killing Governor Scott, successfully manipulating Beam's brother, Laku, into believing in this plan. Laku approaches Raju in secret, expressing his shared desire to assassinate the governor alongside his brother. This almost leads to Raju's arrest. Unable to capture Laku, Raju and his uncle contemplate their next course of action. Meanwhile, Beam and his comrades remain hidden below them. Suddenly, a young boy's cry for help rings out as he finds himself on the verge of being engulfed by fire. Beam and Raju team up to rescue a boy and develop a strong bond over time. One day, Raju shares a sketch of someone he's been searching for, but it accidentally falls before Beam can see it, hiding Raju's connection to Laku. Unaware of Raju's true purpose, Raju assists Beam in pursuing Jenny, Governor Scott's niece, as a romantic interest. During a conversation, Jenny mentions a girl named Molly who is staying with them. Beam is left speechless upon hearing this revelation. He decides to offer a gift to Molly and later gets invited to a party at Jenny's request. Following a dance competition, Beam receives an invitation to Jenny's place, where he discovers Molly is being held captive. Molly pleads for Beam to take her home, but doing so would put them both at risk of capture. Beam is determined to free Molly and manages to capture Laku. However, during the interrogation, Laku throws a venomous snake at Raju, causing him to be bitten. Laku reveals that only the Gons know the antidote, leaving Raju in a critical condition. Beam rushes to Raju's aid, unaware of Raju's true intentions. Despite their differences, Raju realizes Beam's true mission when he notices their shared religious features. Beam, however, reveals his tribal identity and purpose, 
unaware of Raju's undercover role. During a celebration honoring Governor Scott, Beam's men create chaos by releasing various animals, while Beam fights against the guards to secure Jenny's safety. Unexpectedly, Raju arrives in full military uniform, surprising Beam who is unaware of Raju's allegiance to the British as a police officer. Raju proceeds to arrest Beam, despite Beam's plea to focus solely on rescuing Molly. Refusing to be handcuffed, Beam and Raju engage in a fight until Beam is eventually subdued and restrained. Following the incident, Raju receives a promotion for apprehending Beam, but he grapples with a deep sense of guilt due to his conflicting loyalties. Memories of his nationalist background and his undercover role as a mole within the police haunt him. The governor expresses his gratitude towards Raju for his actions and then commands him to punish Beam severely in order to deter any future attacks on the British. Catherine, driven by a desire for vengeance, eagerly supports the governor's decision. With the governor's authority, it is determined that the rebel tribal leader, Beam, will face public flogging as his punishment. All the local residents in the vicinity are encouraged to attend the event, turning it into a spectacle meant to showcase the consequences of challenging British rule. Catherine grows disappointed as Beam's punishment yields no blood, while a spiked flogger is thrown toward Raju. Raju tries to convince Beam to confess, but Beam willingly endures the flogging. Despite the intense pain, Beam defiantly sings, rousing the crowd into a rebellion. Witnessing the chaos, Raju realizes the recklessness of his actions and confides in his uncle to save Beam and free Molly. Raju acknowledges Beam's ability to inspire thousands through his singing. The governor demands Beam's execution, and Raju proposes to hang him in front of Molly. With Molly as their motive, Raju insists that Beam should not be publicly hanged, as it would only elevate his status. Raju proposes an alternative execution location, allowing them to dispose of Beam's body discreetly. While en route to the execution site, Raju strategizes to save Molly. Unfortunately, he sustains severe injuries, but Molly seizes the opportunity to escape into the forest. As Raju faces the approaching police officers, he fires his gun, creating a diversion. Hearing the gunshots, Beam takes advantage of the chaos, overpowering the guards and freeing himself. However, misinterpreting Raju's actions as a threat to Molly, Beam strikes him in the face to protect her before making their escape. With Beam on the run again, the authorities intensify their efforts to capture him. Cash rewards are offered, and wanted posters with his face are distributed widely. Meanwhile, Raju remains determined, using his remaining days before execution to strengthen his body and prepare for the inevitable. Eventually, Beam and Molly find themselves cornered by the pursuing colonial authorities. Just moments away from being captured, a police officer approaches the room where Beam and Molly are hiding. However, Sita, Raju's fiancé, pretends that the people inside are infected with smallpox, scaring the officer away. When this information reaches his superiors, they order the evacuation of the house. Unaware of Beam's true identity, Sita confides in him about Raju's anti-colonial goals and his impending execution. Feeling remorseful for his earlier misunderstanding, Beam resolves to save Raju's life and promises Sita that he will do whatever it takes. Without wasting any time, Beam takes action. With the assistance of Jenny, Beam manages to infiltrate the barracks where Raju is held captive and successfully frees him. However, their escape triggers the attention of multiple soldiers, posing a new challenge. Raju's leg injuries force Beam to carry him on his back as they battle against the soldiers who are trying to stop their escape. Despite the challenges, they successfully retreat to a forest nearby. The governor becomes aware of their presence and orders the special forces to eliminate them. In the forest, Raju and Beam unleash their strength, using a longbow they obtained from a shrine dedicated to Ram. With precise aim, Raju even uses an arrow to launch grenades, eliminating additional soldiers. To create a diversion, Beam picks up a motorcycle and hurls it towards the soldiers, causing chaos. In a direct confrontation, Beam confronts and defeats Andrew, who serves as the governor's assistant. As the soldiers face destruction, Raju and Beam make a daring dash towards the barracks where Governor Scott awaits. Despite the cannons aimed at them, their determination remains unyielding. Raju signals to Beam to utilize his motorcycle, launching it towards the barracks. In a stunning display of precision, Raju shoots an arrow, setting the motorcycle ablaze. As the fiery motorcycle crashes into the barracks, the ammunition explodes, causing casualties among the soldiers and resulting in the tragic death of Catherine. The movie concludes with Governor Scott severely wounded, facing the confrontation of Raju and Beam. Raju strikes him with an arrow, while Beam delivers the final blow using a weapon of British origin. Thank you for watching our recap. If you enjoyed it, please hit the like button and feel free to explore our other recaps.